My Lords, the Minister will be aware that opposition MPs Job Sukala and Godfrey Sitole have now been detained uh, without bail for 142 days in Chikarubi maximum security prison uh, paraded before court in leg irons. Le that only a week ago, Bulawayo MP Jasmine Tofa was violently assaulted as part of an attack on CCC activists, and that across uh, Zimbabwe, political violence is raging uh, as we lead up to the 2023 general elections. Will he join me in calling on the Zimbabwe government to end this political violence now? And will he join me also in making clear to ZANU-PF uh, officials and ministers, to members of the Zimbabwe Republic Police and to Zimbabwe prison officers that the world is watching and holds them accountable for the safety and security of all Zimbabwe citizens? I thank the noble lord for, for raising this an enormously important issue and he's right the world is watching uh, and the UK of course is uh, deeply concerned by the uh, challenging uh, human rights situation in Zimbabwe political parties journalists uh, uh, opponents should be able to operate without any form of harassment and we regularly call for the rights of freedom of assembly and association as well as the rule of law and due process to be respected in line with Zimbabwe's own constitution and of course we monitor all individual cases including those that the noble lord mentioned uh, and um, including that of Jasmine Toffer MP all the political violence is concerning violence against women in politics is of particular concern uh, and particularly in Zimbabwe my Lords, uh, following the continued violence against opposition supporters and candidates at the Matabeleland recent election last weekend, and the refusal of the Electoral Commission to release the electoral roll, what chance is there of there being free and fair elections in July in Zimbabwe? The, 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 the Noble Lord is right to raise this issue as well, and the, the, the UK is... Um, is working closely with international partners to encourage the Zimbabwean government to live up to its own constitution and commitment to electoral reform, including by implementing the recommendations from the 2018 uh, electoral monitoring reports. But we recognize that there has only been very limited progress to date on those electoral reforms that were recommended in that 2018 uh, paper. Key outstanding areas include a, a transparent voter registration process, publication of an accurate voter's role, transparent use of state-owned resources, and more effort to demonstrate the independence of the Electoral Commission. Um, the Diocese of Southwark is linked with four of the five Anglican dioceses in Zimbabwe and the neighbouring Diocese of Rochester with the fifth, Harare. Would the Noble Lord the Minister agree that the systemic corruption and long-standing poor level of governance in that country continually undermines civil society and reduces the well-being of the people and all the institutions, including the church, in Zimbabwe? Well, look, Zimbabwe is a country with extraordinary potential um, uh, and an extraordinary history. And, the, and, and of course, it is, it, is, it is right that current uh, political, um, the, the current political approach inhibits uh, that, 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 that potential. Uh, and the UK is, is a long-standing partner of Zimbabwe. We uh, provide significant levels of uh, ODA, of, of, of aid. But I just want to be clear to the House that, that when we do so, we do so in a way that avoids government-to-government -government bilateral financial aid. In other words, none of the money that we provide uh, is channeled through the government. Instead, we work through multilateral organizations, and wherever we possibly can, we support civil society and NGOs in the private sector. My Lords, just picking up on that point, I have raised on numerous occasions with ministers the continued repression of civil society in Zimbabwe, including trade unionists. Could the noble Lord the Minister tell us what is the latest FCDO's assessment of the passage of the Private Voluntary Organisations Amendment Bill, which ministers have acknowledged could be used to restrict civil space? Could he tell us also how we are working with allies and global civil society to ensure and interfaith groups to ensure that it's their voice that's heard in Zimbabwe and not simply government voices? Uh, the, the government very much agrees with the, 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 the uh, opening remarks of, of the noble lord. We are concerned that the, the private voluntary organisations amendment bill, if it becomes law and if it is implemented, 
could very easily be used to undermine the ability of civil society to operate effectively in Zimbabwe, and it puts at risk as well their ability to deliver development and humanitarian assistance. Um, we, we engage very, very widely, not only with civil society within Zimbabwe, not only through our overseas development assistance, which I mentioned earlier, but also, importantly, with South Africa. And we have long, deep-standing ties, uh, as noble lords will know, with South Africa, recognize the important role that the African Union and Southern, Southern African Development Community, or SADC, uh, uh, have in relation to Zimbabwe, and that, that the UK officials uh, speak very, very often on a broad range of issues, including, of course, on Zimbabwe. My lords, my lords, my lords many of us had... My lords, no, no, you my lords. Uh, reference has already been made to the elections in 2018, and I was one of the observers on behalf of the Commonwealth with Baroness Jay from this country at the time. The report was pretty damning, particularly in relation to the events after the general election in 2018. Could my uh, friend, my noble friend, ensure that there are very, very strong representations made to the Electoral Commission, because they have been lamentable in any action. They were before the 2018 election, and there's no sign that they are going to enforce any form of free and fair elections next year. My Lords, we'll, we will use whatever leverage we have in order to maximise the chance of free and fair elections. And can I make a broader point? That, that we know that the President Mangawe, Munungawe, apologies, wants more engagement with the UK. That, that's clear. And, and in many respects, we do too. But deeper re engagement with the UK will require meaningful political and economic reform and respect for human rights and the rule of law in line with the President's own stated commitments when he took office. The then African Minister, uh, a former African Minister, reinforced that message when she met the President last year at COP. My Lord, the, um, the, 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 on this issue, I'm afraid that consistency is not reflected in the Ministers for Africa. We are now going to be on our sixth Minister for Africa in just three years. I heard the Minister refer to the welcome involvement of officials with our SADC friends, uh, but has there been any ministerial meetings with SADC allies on a regional solution to ensure there's the highest pressure to ensure that there's the end of political violence and free and fair elections, ministerial meetings with SADC allies? Uh, my Lords, I can't provide details of ministerial meetings. It's not to say they haven't happened. I just don't have the details of specific meetings. But I do know that at numerous uh, international fora, uh, um, the Africa minister, but other ministers as well, including myself, have had discussions with um, neighboring countries in the region where this, but other issues too, have been raised. But I, I will provide uh, details on specific meetings with SADC uh, uh, after this session is completed. Noble Lord Oates has uh, outlined the shocking violence that's being perpetrated by Zanu PF and Manangagua on anyone really who opposes the regime. The economic situation is dire. People, hunger and food is being used as, as a, a, in, against anyone who opposes the regime. The visit of the South African President, the first state visit of His Majesty the King, does this not give the government a real opportunity, a wonderful opportunity, to actually work with the South African government and talk to them about how they can influence, and together those in Africa can influence to ensure that there will be free and fair, really free and fair elections next year in Zimbabwe? Uh, Noble Baroness um, is, has been a real champion for Zimbabwe for many years, and, and I want to pay tribute to that. And, and she's right to identify this uh, upcoming visit as a real opportunity. There is no doubt that South Africa, indeed Southern Africa, uh, Southern, Southern African countries, not least through SADC, have, a, have a, a, a particular ability to influence Zimbabwe, far more so than we can. So I, I'm sure that, that, that this topic we're discussing today will be on the agenda when the visit happens. My Lords, the UK is concerned by the trend of lengthy pre-trial detention of government critics in Zimbabwe. We're monitoring the ongoing detention of uh, MPs Job Sikala and Godfrey Sitole. Uh, as the Ambassador publicly stated on October the 2nd, the UK is committed to the fundamental right to peaceful assembly and association as enshrined in Zimbabwe's constitution. And the former Minister for Africa also raised the issue with the Foreign Minister of Zimbabwe on the 30th of June.